You're listening to Forward Faster, bite-sized insights for entrepreneurs. So hi, I am Damon Deal, and I am the Technology Program Manager here at Luminate. Today, I'm going to be interviewing Kushik Nundi from Think Biosolution. And what Think Biosolution makes is a product called Quasar, which uh, you guys call a Fitbit on steroids, because in addition to measuring heart rate, you're measuring also things like heart rate variability and, let's see, respiration. Am I right? There's some other features as well, yes. right? So, Kusha, can you tell us a little bit about your technology, about Quasar? So, uh, what we are doing at Think Biosolution is that we are building multiple remote patient monitoring platforms, and these platforms uh, are primarily for at-home chronic care, and they consist of our uh, Quasar device, uh, which can measure a wide variety of biometric signals, uh, like heart rate, heart rate variability, respiratory rate, blood oxygen saturation, movement, location, temperature. With this device, we have uh, an EHR-compatible uh, HIPAA-compliant cloud we have uh, clinical dashboards for geriatric care, for uh, intensive uh, post-operative care, and for continuous monitoring of uh, chronically ill patients. So that's going to be your initial market then, is the home monitoring care? Have I got that right then? Yes. So okay. our initial market, uh, we have two initial markets. One is a geriatric care platform where we ensure that the subject's vitals at home are stable. And also the other one is certain post-operative uh, schedules require intensive uh, monitoring and care, which is why people have to prolong their hospital stays. And if they could move that uh, care pathway away from the hospital ecosystem into their own homes, we are trying to enable that with our continuous monitoring platform. So what are some trends that you see as a whole in the in the medical industry related to this uh, this matter of um, continuous so, monitoring? So historically, uh, most of the communication and interaction uh, that uh, patients uh, have had with uh, clinicians is uh, within the hospital context where there has been continuous monitoring or within the clinic concept where there is more of a spot check where people go in when they're actually uh, ill or in trouble already. So uh, over the past few years, we have seen uh, a lot of telehealth companies move away from that paradigm into a space where uh, the uh, clinical interaction is from a home setting or from a more remote setting. Mm -hmm. And the... Uh, the care paradigm has already shifted to a more distributed space. Uh, but more recently, we've been seeing uh, attempts to uh, gain more information about the patient in a, uh, over a continuous period of time uh, so that uh, the clinicians have more information on how they can best serve their patients. So what brought you into doing this kind of, of work then, this kind of desire to meld these, uh, these pieces? So this takes us a little bit uh, further back uh, into where we first started mm -hmm. working together. I think by Solution CEO, Shoja and I, we have been working together for 11 years now mm -hmm. in various capacities. And when we were in undergrad, we, were, we went to the same university back in India. We were pursuing an engineering education. And I was visiting uh, Shoja when his grandmother fell ill mm -hmm. and she had to be hospitalized. So uh, when we uh, went to the hospital, there was a, we got a kind of uh, closer view into how uh, piecemeal the whole uh, healthcare ecosystem was and how it was necessarily a patchwork of small parts which worked, but which did not necessarily uh, form a coherent whole and the healthcare system uh, was overextended. And India in particular, but most countries in general have a problem that the there are too many patients and too few doctors mm -hmm. and nurses. So uh, in India, for example, there's uh, around a thousand patients for every doctor. How many is it for other countries then? So it's anywhere between uh, 20 to 500 in most of the developed world. Okay. That's still a lot. <laughs> so... Uh, in the U.S., I believe it's somewhere in the 200s. Okay. And uh, 
it is not possible for uh, a doctor to continuously be following a patient around. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is when we uh, realized that the best way to uh, better serve patients is to have a more complete picture, a more mm -hmm. continuous picture. And that that is only possible when you take the uh, a part of the care pathway and take it to the patient's home. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's where Quasar comes uh, in then. Uh, that's where we started uh, working on continuous monitoring and at-home uh, chronic care solutions. Quasar came later around 2015 when we okay. started developing the sensor. And uh, then that translated into first the device and then the platforms. So Quasar is not the first product that you guys have done as a partnership, correct? So the first product we built together uh, back in 2010 was... Uh, a vein detection device mm -hmm. uh, mostly for uh, uh, blood drives and uh, rural clinics where mm -hmm. the, the level of training is not uh, necessarily uh, as vast because these are volunteer driven platforms and we wanted to enable these people to help uh, the patients as best they could. Okay. So you guys have been around uh, quite a while then. It is the Quasar product that brought you into the Luminate program. So can you tell me a little bit about what you found, you know, once you're accepted, you guys won, uh, not only were you entered in the program for $100,000, but you were one of the companies that was selected for the uh, quarter of a million follow-on funding. When you got here, what did you get out of the Luminate program? So... Uh Rochester has always been a, a focal point for uh, optical and mm -hmm. optoelectronics uh, industries for for uh, most uh, of the recent his, uh, most of the recent past, and we uh, coming in we had expected a lot of support uh, in terms of better understanding our technology and better building out our manufacturing and uh, uh, engineering pathways. But uh, when we came in, we not only received a lot of support on the technology side of things, but also a lot of guidance uh, and help from uh, our mentors at Luminate, as well as from the sessions that Luminate organized into uh, scaling our uh, business operations, our sales, our marketing, mm -hmm. and uh, the entire financial structure that goes around building a company. So we already knew how to build a product, but... Uh, building a product and building a company are s overlapping but separate journeys. So you guys have really Im embedded yourself into the Rochester community. I know you've already got uh, office space here as as well. Um, so are there things that surprised you when you got to Rochester as well? You talked about the advantage that you took, but were there things that you weren't expecting to happen? So the biggest surprise was the amount of uh, scaling in terms of business operations mm -hmm. uh, that we could do and how fast we could do it and the access to mentors and the level of support we got even after the program was over. So it was not just a five-month journey. Mm -hmm. It was a, uh, the five-month journey was the beginning of a relationship uh, which has helped us build out our operations as, and our sales in the U.S., uh, Rochester has kind of become our uh, second home, and it's the U.S. headquarters now. Okay. So uh, it has uh, it has been a very uh, interesting two years, and we've I believe we've gained a lot from not just the program itself, and of course, the, I mean the money doesn't hurt. Right. <laughs> but, uh, but even outside of the program itself, uh, our, uh, the support we got from Luminate and Nextcore has been unparalleled. So we're going into year three of the Luminate program. Do you have advice for the new cohort that would be coming in? Things that you wish that you had known that coming in? My primary advice would be kind of twofold. One aspect is I believe that the sessions are a very important core part of the program. So getting senior management or the CXOs uh, into the sessions and having a plan on what you intend to get get out of each of these sessions coming in uh, instead of coming in blind and in, into we'll learn sales or we'll learn operations might not be the most helpful uh, way to 
look at these sessions mm-hmm. instead maybe we want to understand how to uh, target a particular market n- having a distinct ask mm-hmm. f- uh, to uh, maximize the value you can get from each of these sessions might be a good idea okay and and never miss a session that's, never miss that, a session never miss, miss yeah a session. that's something that uh, you've said to me before and other people have said that you know a bigger part of the uh, one of the companies I talked to was like that it was like an MBA that was crammed into a six month program a lot of concentration at one point um, so you guys have been around now for almost 10 years what do you see as a trend moving so, forward in the in the industry in general I mean in, Thing Biosolution in, in, in first, its so. current form is less than four years old less than four okay <laughs> so uh, while Shorja and I have been working together for a very long time it, uh, our early collaborations were mostly in an academic environment as okay. opposed to a corporate environment. Okay. And uh, so you've known each other for ten years. We've known each other for, for like approaching fifteen years now. Okay. Okay. We went to school together. Okay. So anyway, I, again, uh, if you were to look forward for ten years in just the industry in general, based on your experience so far, what do you think? So I, I believe the significance of data is being better understood by the healthcare industry. Mm-hmm. But the sheer amount of data in isolation doesn't make sense if uh, we just throw a bunch of raw data and see what sticks. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, I believe there will be further consolidation of care pathways with uh, data analysis, which will enable clinical practitioners to better understand chronic and mm-hmm. uh, acute care and kind of build a holistic approach towards looking at all the information that they can gather and utilizing that to not only uh, make patients healthier, but also make patients more comfortable. Mm -hmm. Because overextended healthcare systems, like uh, hospitals are overcrowded. There is money in healthcare in terms of uh, funding systems, but as world population increases, the rate of growth of people who need healthcare is faster than the rate of growth of healthcare ecosystems in the classical sense. Mm-hmm. So we need more expanded understanding of what healthcare actually is and where it starts and where it ends. And I believe that we are moving in that direction. Mm-hmm. And I believe that um, healthcare is no longer being limited within the ambit of a hospital. Mm-hmm. And uh, also people are... Uh, more aware and more informed right. uh, about uh, ensuring that they uh, lead healthy lives before they actually fall ill. So your your product, Quasar, uh, I know for one thing it started out as, uh, when I first saw it, as kind of this athletic support uh, monitor. And so in line with uh, looking forward, where do you see Quasar moving forward from here? So, or I uh, guess what I mean is Think Bio Solution moving on. You've got the Quasar product now. So uh, with the uh, we started off with the Quasar device, mm-hmm. but then we kind of expanded that into the Quasar platform. Okay. Uh, be- uh, and uh, we have built out, as I already mentioned, we have built out a continuous monitoring platform, a geriatric care platform, and we are building out other platforms that integrate with both old and new clinical care pathways. Mm-hmm. And we engage uh, thoroughly with mm-hmm. the medical community to figure out what is the best fit for um, both the uh, doctor and the patient. Okay. So we are, uh, in the over the next uh, few years, we want to build mm-hmm. a wider variety of platforms mm-hmm. around the same paradigm, which uh, address different care pathways for different uh, medical scenarios okay and uh, we want to be a one stop shop for people uh, who need uh, remote patient monitoring platforms okay well we wish you the best of luck and again this is uh, Kushik from Think Bio Solution and if you want to learn more about them uh, that is www.thinkbiosolution.com thank you for watching thank you <laughs>